Hey, it's Emma here. Just wanted to let you know what the team are hoping for in the race. Hi guys, and welcome back to F1 2017 career mod today. It is the Austrian Grand Prix. We have a target of qualifying in 14th or higher and beating Nico Hulkenberg. And we'll see on the grid whether or not I manage to do that objective. But firstly, going into the laptop, I have to change all of the components before the actual qualifying session. But for some components, we're on our like third component. So that's going to be a bit interesting going into like the latter part of the season. The gearbox is still okay. Uh, the durability has helped a lot. In fact, like 38% reduction. That's that's really good. And hopefully we can get more upgrades to make sure it doesn't like wear out before like the six races. But then as you can see, we're quite close to Toro Rosso in the performance chart. But then we're kind of faster than Williams. So this isn't really a fair comparison. So before we get into the race, let's take a quick look at the grid ahead of the Austrian Grand Prix. Once again, Lewis Hamilton takes pole position ahead of the Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen. We've seen a lot of these two on the front row in recent races. In P3 is Sebastian Vettel in the other Ferrari, followed by Max Verstappen. Valtteri Bottas is in P5. Lance Stroll did very well to line up P6, along with Sergio Perez in the Force India there, lining up in P7. P8 goes to Daniel Ricciardo. P9 to Esteban Ocon. P10 to Felipe Massa. 11th goes to Magnussen, a very exceptional Qualifying lap from him, sees him start just outside the top 10. Julian Palmer lines up in P12, alongside Daniel Kafiat in P13. Carlos signs in P14, followed closely by Nico Hulkenberg in P15. We line up P16, P17 and P18 go to Fernando Alonso and Mark Eriksson. Pascal Verlein and Stoffel van Dorn round off the grid. So that's it for the grid. Now it's over to the race. Okay, so we have to try and get above 14th in this race, which shouldn't be too much of a difficult task. We've been able to pretty much out-race our objective quite a lot of the time. However, our tyre strategy is an interesting one. We're starting on the Ultra Softs and going on to the Super Softs. In fact, two sets of Super Softs, maybe. We may end up changing it a bit later on, depending. But there's going to be some rain at some point during the race. So in, in theory, that strategy is very open to change whether or not we want to wait until the like the, the rain period. But five red lights to the Austrian Grand Prix, it's lights out. And Hulkenberg gets a very, very uh, weird start there. And as we're going to turn one, in fact, we make brief contact with Kofia down the inside of Palmer and Sainz and the other Toro Rosso there. Hul uh, uh, well, Palmer had the advantage. We then overtake him later on, but then we're going to get boxed in by Perez and Ocon here. And now we go to the inside to go up the hill, hopefully to overtake him and maybe our teammate as well as we go down to the braking zone and we just side by side with our teammate on the exit there. And in fact, Magnussen is going to have the better traction. And in fact, he's probably going to get even a better run than me into this corner. But as we go into the braking zone, in this one, we do overtake him. We kind of go a little bit wide on the line there. But nonetheless, we are ahead of him. Just though, in fact, as we go round this corner, it'll be interesting to see how well Magnussen has his car set up as well as Ricardo, Because Ricardo's pulling away. After all, it is Red Bull's home circuit. So I'm, I'm guessing they'll be pretty good in Sector 2 and Sector 3. Because that's where most of the downforce kind of is. But last corner, let's see how much of a good run we can get up out of the final corner. In fact, it's a it's a good run because Magnussen's further back, but then it doesn't take him long to close back upon us. And as we dip our tyre on the grass, we slow right down and, and Magnussen then has the line, the outside line going into this corner as we go down the inside and trying to give him the room once again. In fact, he's got a better run than what he did before because one, he has DRS and two, I left him way too much room. So into this corner, once again, can we overtake? And in fact, we don't. We stick behind him, but Magnussen, Magnussen locks up there and he's compromised. But still, Matt, for some strange reason, he's able to hold it down the inside of this corner. And hopefully we'll be able to fend him off. And we still can't. So we go round the outside to give him the room and then we have to back out and cut in behind. No way you can make it round the outside there at all. But now we've fallen victim, kind of, to Sergio Perez as Magnussen goes really slow into that second to last corner. 
getting on the kerb slightly, getting a bit unsteady into the final corner, sliding around. We lost momentum through there and our rhythm. And we, we do have DRS, but Perez also has DRS. But as we're going to turn one, we just about fend off Perez there. And our next job is to catch up to Magnussen. And pretty much towards the back end of lap five now, we are behind Magnussen. And we'll see if we can get a move done on him. As we go into this corner, we are a lot better through there than what we were before the last time, in fact. And in fact, we've got a great exit off that last corner. So now we've got DRS, so does Magnussen, but I've put it up into Rich Mix. Now into Lean to try and save a bit of fuel down the inside. Magnussen locks up and Perez and Ocon take his place. So Magnussen, in the end, lost three places out there. So going on to lap seven with P9. Everyone's still in the race. Ricardo's ahead as well as two Williams cars. But then there's a massive pile up. Don't know what happened there. Probably Massa cut the corner. In fact, got a really bad run. And we take three positions. But then after everyone else ahead of us has made their stops, we're in P3. We're going to box this lap for a set of, of fresh tyres. And I believe these are going to be the super soft tyres. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not our strategy will work, to be quite honest. We're going to go on to a set of super softs now, but it'll be interesting to see. One, will they hold out till the weather hits, or the rain hits, I should say? Or two, have we completely bottled our strategy at this point? I mean, we can kind of go on to another set of super softs later on, so we kind of open ourselves up for that as well. So we're not going all the way till the end on these. But we're still going to be pretty quick at the same time. But the hope is the rain will come down. Hopefully towards the back end of the race when these tyres are still actually okay. And hopefully we won't have to make any unnecessary pit stops for anything. But we are approaching a yellow flag section. And it's a safety car. As soon as I come out the pit lane, it's a safety car. A full course safety car. Perez is out the race. That has kind of put us on the back foot slightly. Because we have pitted. But Alonso, I don't think has. We're now stuck behind the McLaren. We're stuck behind some midfield cars that were a lot faster than as seen pretty much this season. We've been faster than sometimes the Force India, the Williams at some point as well. Toro Rosso, definitely. Obviously, the McLarens and Saubers, we've been quicker than. So it'll be interesting to see how the restart will fare out because I don't really want to get held up. And in fact coming to the end of like the first kind of safety car lap no one comes into the pit lane but here is the yellow flag but wait we're on the restart of the safety car Sainz has an engine issue and it's so inconvenient that he, he decided to have his engine issue there because out of the final corner I am pretty good but Sainz kind of didn't allow me to overtake so we've been held up as now we overtake Fernando Alonso and possibly Verline is that no we don't we don't overtake Verline just yet. In fact, we've lost a lot of time to actually 10th place because of Ericsson, Verline and Alonso as well. Not allowing to overtake because of the yellow flags because of Sainz's incident. So as we go down the inside, up the hill, Pascal, Verline, see you later. Squeeze him out on the outside, we've, we're done. And we're now up into P5 after everyone else has made their stops. But then Massa and Stroll are right behind us now as we try to go to the inside. Didn't know where Massa was going to go. So I kind of just... At, because he, he wanted to go around the outside, but then it looked like he was going onto the inside. That's why I moved to the inside to avoid a potential crash. So, P5, lap 18, we are going to set the inters because I believe Jeff said that the, the rain wouldn't be too far away. So, hopefully, our next pit stop will go onto the intermediates, and then that'll be it. Hopefully, if the rain comes down pretty soon. But we're up into P4. I've like a car, I think it was Vettel in the pit lane. So we gain one position from that. We're 10 places above our objective and Massa is now on the back of us. And five minutes till the rain, says Jeff. And in, in, in that time, Massa and Stroll decide to overtake. Well, Massa up the inside of you. Tried to give him the room on the outside, of course. He's still pretty much on track. We've got a side by side here. I've got the better line, arguably, going down into this corner. He's going to the outside line, I've got the inside for this corner, down the inside on the brakes, nice and tight to the apex and yes, we kind of do squeeze him out a little bit, but he still keeps his car alongside, it's going to be a repeat of what me and Magnussen did, except Massa hits up the inside and gets it done 
what a move from Massa. That chassis for that Williams is just great. So that's why he was able to kind of go down the inside and overtake me. Now that's left me vulnerable to stroll because I went slow through that corner. So now we're going to have to watch it into the second to last turn. Stroll decides to make a move, decides against it instead. As we go down the inside, this corner again. Let's see if we can squeeze out Massa this time. And we certainly do. Very aggressive squeeze. That's what we should have done last lap. But now it's lap 20. It's getting a little bit overcast. Bottas is ahead of us in P3. We don't need to worry about him. Hamilton decided to pit, like, ahead of us. That's why we're in P4, I think. And he's on a set of Ultrasofts, and he's going to try and overtake us right now. And as you, as you can see, there's a little hint of rain. In fact, you can see that there's, there's a few drops, which could be a sign of changeable conditions. I'm not too sure, but Hamilton seems to be getting pace on the Ultras. Quite interesting, as we're going to lap 25, it's... It's only 11 laps till the end of the race. Well, 12. But I don't know. I don't know if it'll fall down quick enough. But it's lap four. It's lap 27, not lap 4. We're in P4. Bottas has also pitted ahead of us. And he's doing exactly the same as Hamilton. He's going to try and overtake us on this little bit here. And as we can see, he kind of gets ahead of us, but then we back out. But then the... Uh, the line that Bottas took just slowed us right up. So we lost a little bit of time there to Verstappen behind. He was actually on the soft tyres. Just a bit weird. Don't know why he would go on onto those. But the conditions are starting to get a little bit worse. As you can see, there's some spray now from the tyres. Especially the front left. You can see there's, there's some spray. But then it's lap 30. Seven laps till the end of the race. We're going on to lap 31. So then it'll be six laps till the end of the race. We decide to come in. For a set of intermediates, these tyres were past their life, and in fact, I couldn't really stand the intermediate conditions anymore. So we decided to come in and fit on a set of inters. Whether or not this will be too early is another thing. I had no choice. I couldn't go on another set of dries because the tyres were going off, and the conditions are really bad. And then we're going to make one extra pit stop, so I decided to come in now. I kind of, like, bottled the strategy slightly. I should have probably gone onto the softs, but you never know. The weather in this game is a little bit weird. That's what I can say because sometimes it'll say it'll rain, but then we'll, we'll not change tr track conditions at all. And then it'll rain, but then it, the conditions will change massively. So it's kind of harder to detect those changes. But we come out behind Orcon and it's lap 32 before we even start trying to catch up. So really, we came in two laps too early. Just a little bit of a shame because... I thought I got this pretty much spot on and it was just two laps too early. In in theory, really. No one's coming into the pit lane. Which is a bit weird. For a set of inters. So they think that the conditions are still okay. For dries. Which, which in fact, I, I know they're not. Because look, look how much spray that there is. As you can see, we're going out through turn one. And we're going to try and catch up to Orcon now. Just look on how much we catch up Orcon by during this braking zone up the hill. So this is going to be, this is a pretty tricky braking zone in the wet. But nonetheless, as you can see, Orcon is much closer now. And in fact, we get a better exit than what he does. So we're going to try and look for a move down to this corner. We're going to have to be a little bit careful. It is a bit wet. And, if, and we're just going to go to the inside... Luckily, that was a move down the inside there, and we squeeze Orkun out. He can't hold it around the outside. There's, there's literally no grip there off the racing line at all. And then ahead of us is Stroll. So have we messed up our strategy, or have we kind of gained from this? We'll probably find out at the end of this lap. Because from what I can see, just out of the corner of the mini-map, there's a car in the pit lane. So I'm guessing the AI are going to come in now and pit so stroll is going all the way to the right which implies he's going into the pit lane he blocks the racing line which is a bit of a weird pit entry blocks the racing line slows us down a little bit as we get a good run out of the final corner we put up into rich mix to try and burn some fuel as well as trying to overtake some cars in the pit lane we are in p5 now let's see where we'll end up we'll other well i think we've jumped hamilton we've jumped hamilton and we possibly may jump for staff in here as well. In fact, Verstappen did gain more time in the pit lane on us, but as we go down, well in fact down into this corner, I say up into this corner now, Verstappen's on the outside, we squeeze him out, but kind of a little bit of an unfair move, but we let him back on track, but then in the end, he can't 
really have it around the outside there. But then a lap after that, Verstappen's found his rhythm. The tyres are all warmed up. He's going to try and look down the inside as we go and follow the outside line this time. Give him the room, of course. And on the exit, can we find some grip? Yes, we can. Verstappen has none. And he goes a little bit wide. This is lap 35. We're in P4. This is a promising finishing position for us here. But Bottas is ahead of us. It is very unlikely we're going to catch him up. And in fact, I think these conditions are starting to get a lot worse. But Verstappen is behind us still. There's a yellow flag as well, which I think someone has retired. I'm not too sure who it is. We have now 17 runners in this race, which is a... I don't know where they've all gone, to be quite honest. But then this yellow flag is very crucial for my position. As you can see, I went slidey on the exit there on the curb because I got caught on the curb and that's very slippery so that kind of helped me lose less time to Verstappen because Verstappen couldn't overtake so as we go through the final corner try and get a good exit to head, finish ahead of Verstappen and I think it's safe to say that it's P4 and it, in fact it is P4 what a race what a result our best result of the season we're just one off that elusive podium so here they come now out onto the podium wherever you go anywhere in the world the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today it's ferrari on the top step once more well what a race that was very eventful towards the end with the conditions and all that but magnuson manages to get into the point so it's 13 points for haas at the end of that force india though Ocon only getting two points, and Perez has went out from the race earlier. That caused the safety car, so Force India are going to lose some points to us. At the end of, at the end of that session, then, 619 resource points. We're drawing the rivalry with Nico Hulkenberg. We have to beat him, of course. In fact, you don't really need to beat your rival. It's just better if you do. But we get more reputation from Williams, Force India, Red Bull, especially from literally being nothing, and Mercedes as well, from being nothing to increasing level, which is good. We need to get those like higher teams to get interested so we can possibly get an, a contract offer from them. But now we have a team up to it. Hi, Emma here. I had a sit down with the executives today to talk about your progress. Long story short, they are happy. Okay, so now the team are much more faithful in us and in fact they're more happier because we're in the purple zone for the first time, quite possibly in the season as you can see, br quite briefly. But here's the the R&D kind of progress history thing and, and below is kind of our, our, resu our results that we got this season. We're pretty consistent. We've been in the points pretty much nine times out of ten anyway. Um, but with the upgrades, now I'm starting to focus a little bit on the chassis, I think. But I'm just going through to see where we are in all of the, uh, the comparisons here. So aero and chassis were kind of bad. Aero were just ahead of Force India at the moment. But chass chassis were like just better than the Saubers. So I kind of want to upgrade the chassis next and ditch Aero for the time being because, like, this part of the season you don't really need it. It, it may be towards like Singapore, Japan, possibly USA, where, where, like, where you need all the Aero as such. But most of the Aero tracks are pretty much early on in the season. So. We've completed five out of our six races on the gearbox. We should be able to make it to the sixth one without any issues at all. Uh, just switching back to the normal components, like the uh, the broken ones for practice, of course. But we're using our third MGU-H and third turbocharger. Whether or not we'll make it to the end of the season with four components is another thing. MGU-H, we, we might. Turbocharger, we probably won't because the turbocharger's wears quite quickly from what I I have uh, kind of found out. Engine's not doing too bad actually, surprisingly, but I'm deciding to kind of back off a little bit. I think from this point onward, I'm going to start using the components like Energy Store more because those are kind of like, we're only on our second unit, but here's the Drivers' Championship. We're eighth at the moment on 39 points, tying with Orcon of course, and in the Constructors we are sixth place. But that's going to be the end of this episode of F1 2017 Career Mode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I shall see you all next time.